Starting with this book, they changed the cover art. Now it looks more like a romance series than a mystery series. The logo was changed, the book number and title now appears at the top. The book spines were also changed to include a picture and bold font. This new format continues until book 112. I don't know why they made the big change on book 99. Wouldn't it have made more sense to unveil the new style with book 100? Argofonk book review, Argofonk book review. Nancy is back at Ned's crime-ridden college, staying at the same sorority from book 92. Nancy visits here so often, they should officially induct her as a full-time sorority sister. Nancy is rooming with Brooke, who is so attractive and independent, how does she not have a boyfriend yet? Brooke quickly makes a love connection with Paul DeToma from Ned's frat. Ned is in trouble. Professor Tavakolian asked Ned to photocopy the English test that all incoming freshmen have to take. The answer sheet has gone missing. The professor accuses Ned of stealing the answers and selling them to students. I should note that Tavakolian is not Ned's professor. He's never met Ned before. Tavakolian just grabbed the nearest student and forced them to make 200 copies for him. It just happened to be Ned in this case. It sounds to me like the entire problem could have been avoided if Professor Tavakolian did his own work. Paul asks if Brooke has a boyfriend. Ned shows off the moving bookshelves in the library. Nancy investigates the six students who got perfect scores on the test. Two of them are huge nerds, so she safely ignores them. Carrie and Tom are both really nervous about the prospect of having to retake the test. Annie is a total airhead. Steve Groff is a swimmer who's angry all the time. Ned buys new school books. He finds the missing answer key inside one of them. He's confused because he just bought the book ten minutes ago. Nancy reluctantly reports this evidence to the dean. Nancy searches the rooms of her four suspects. Steve catches her snooping. Nancy almost gets into a car crash while investigating Tom. She learns his mother is a cleaning lady with access to the professor's study. When Nancy searches Carrie's room, she finds the answer key. Nancy insists she can't report this to the dean. Why not? She reported it to the dean immediately when she found the answers in Ned's possession. Why does Carrie get a pass? Steve gets into a fight with Paul. Annie acts like she and Paul are close friends. This makes Brooke sad, while it makes Paul confused. He barely knows Annie. Someone writes thief on Paul's favorite jacket. The group goes to a concert. When Nancy and Ned leave to get food, someone unscrews Nancy's seat. She almost falls to her death. Nancy's night is further ruined when she and Ned have an argument. He says she doesn't care about his college career. Maybe she thinks he's guilty. Ugh. Brooke and Paul have a much better night together. Brooke doesn't get home until after midnight. Whoa. Nancy confronts Carrie. Carrie admits that she paid $50 for the test answers, but she had a change of heart and didn't use them. I don't believe her for a second, but that doesn't matter. Carrie bought the test from Steve. He claims he's innocent too. He found the test in a trash can. The culprit puts broken glass in Paul's food, and Professor Tavakolian calls. He says the answer sheet was not stolen after all. He just misplaced it. He wants to close the case and declare Ned as innocent. I like how Nancy doesn't take the easy way out here. She insists on continuing the investigation. Ned gives Nancy a highly detailed explanation of what he did when the test was stolen. Why didn't he do this ten chapters ago? Someone could have stolen the test answers when he left them alone for a minute, or they could have printed a second copy of the test when it was in the print queue. The culprit leaves a noose and a threatening note in Nancy's room. The culprit breaks Paul's car window and leaves another threatening note. Nancy and the police examine all these various threats, which gives her the idea to get handwriting samples from suspects. Nancy steals Annie's diary for the handwriting. 
Conveniently, this diary reveals everything. Annie has been stalker-obsessed with Paul for years. She got into Paul's college by impersonating her smart twin sister. Annie stole the test answers and framed Ned. She's been trying to target Brooke for getting too close to Paul, but she keeps missing by accident. I can believe she accidentally sabotaged the wrong person once or twice, but four times? That's a pretty incompetent culprit. Annie lures Brooke to the library for a death trap. Nancy rushes there in time to save Brooke from being stabbed. Annie traps Nancy and Brooke behind the moving bookshelves. The two women push against the shelf to stop it from crushing them. They're saved when Ned undoes the machinery. I have to say, it sounds pretty dangerous to have heavy machinery which can be remote operated inside a library. I'm surprised nobody has been killed so far. Paul calms Annie down by pretending to like her. She is taken back home for intense psychiatric treatment. The cheaters are put on academic probation, and Ned writes Nancy a love note. The end. Postbook follow-up. Like the last book, this book story was a little confused. The order of events doesn't always make sense, such as Ned waiting ten chapters to thoroughly explain what he did at the time of the crime, and Nancy waiting so long before confronting Carrie. Confront your suspect right away, Nancy! Don't go on two double dates first! I'm not sure how many suspects the book has. Do we ignore the two suspects that Nancy ignores? Do we count the people who are suggested as suspects but don't get thoroughly investigated? Which are Ned, Pete, and the cleaning lady? If so, that's nine suspects. The romance stuff was okay. I thought it got in the way of the mystery. For example, when Nancy gets an anonymous note that says Paul is the culprit, her response is, Oh no! That will be bad for Brooke's relationship! That's not the important thing you need to focus on, Nancy! The back cover also thinks Brooke's love life matters just as much as the possibility of Ned getting kicked out of college. I'm a little worried the series is going to go all in with romance starting with this book. Yes, I know romance is nothing new for this series, but I don't want to see it all the time. Especially since this series keeps recycling the same few romance storylines. This is the second Ned book in a row where he starts a fight about her investigation, and it looks like they'll break up. I think I'd recommend this book. It's pretty fast-paced, and it focuses enough on the mystery that I can't accurately say it prioritizes romance the whole time. Brooke was a good character. Since I liked her more than Paul, I wish she had been the victim all along, like the culprit intended instead of having the fake-out where the culprit accidentally targets the wrong person four times. I give Nancy Drew Files number 99, The Cheating Heart, a 6 out of 10.